and CEO of The Lip Bar, Melissa Butler. Welcome to the show, girl. I have no idea how excited I am this morning. Detroit-based beauty brand, The Lip Bar. And today, we are starting off with Melissa Butler, a CEO making our city more vibrant in more ways than one. She created products that are vegan, non-toxic, and flatter a variety of skin tones. I have on one of their lippies right now. Yes, I'm wearing them today. I love my lip bar lipsticks, and I have some of their foundation on as well. And honestly, on this show, I've been on about four times so far. I've probably had on the lip bar three out of those four times because their reds are the perfect red for me. Wanting to build a soap company, pivoting to a lip company, and now having an empire. I never thought that I would own a makeup company. It's pretty wild that we've been in business for, for 10 years. In some ways, people are like, oh my God, you must be so proud. Like, did you think that you would take it this far? And in some ways, it's like, actually, I thought I would take it further. And then in some ways, if I really, if I really get granular, if I really start remembering and like practicing gratitude, then I'm like, wow, this is a wild fucking ride. Like, you did this from nothing, and now and now look at it. And now even look at you, because I've grown so much in the same way that the business has grown so much. I feel really honored that I was able to grow up in a city that was so heavily black. Like, I grew up being able to see black lawyers and black doctors while also being able to see black drug addicts and drug dealers. So I always had this very wide perspective of what it meant to be black. I was able to see truly black excellence while also seeing black poverty and being able to say, oh, that was an individual's choice as opposed to like, oh, this is what it means to be black because of the diversity of blackness in Detroit. To me and Melissa are cousins. We share the same great grandmother. And Melissa's mom, in some ways, kind of helped raise me. I would always hear that uh, my little cousin was just so inquisitive and, and curious and articulate. And then uh, when I started spending time around her freshman year in high school, she just had an ease with people and an inner confidence that um, it was stark. It, it was really easy to identify kind of early that. She had some innate characteristics that would serve her well in life. All right, we are at my high school, y'all. I went to Cass Tech. Um, this was one of those things that changed my life. What's crazy, y'all? I used to be a bad kid. Like, my freshman year of high school, I actually got kicked out. And so I decided to transfer. I decided to turn my life over to school, okay? To academia. And so I came to Cass Tech. Did you think I was bad in high school? No, yeah. you've always did with was whatever you wanted to to a degree. You know, you were just That's true. You were not bad. You were just adventurous, I'd say. Adventurous. Is that yeah. a nice way of saying bad? <laughs> no, you were not bad. I can't say you were bad. No. Adventurous. No. I did do everything I wanted to do. But I think it's because you gave me a lot of freedom. Like sometimes when I think about it, I'm like, oh, she might have gave me too much freedom, but think about yeah. where you are now, though. If I wouldn't have gave you that freedom, held you in, you may not be the woman you are today. That could be true, you know. That could be true. Yeah, I, get that. <laughs> I, get that. I had started a Negro League athletic, retro athletic clothing concept um, about this same time as about Melissa's freshman year in high school or so. And her mom had approached me, said basically, my daughter needs a job. And you got this whole business going out here. What are we gonna do, right? So, you know, family being family, I was like, all right, well, bring her out to the mall and, and let me talk to her. And I remember it like it was yesterday. People would walk by as I'm kind of talking to her and talking to her mom about what we do, what I expect of her. And she started engaging with customers like instantaneously. And she had no prior experience. It was like her first job ever, right? So obviously I was like, okay, well, you know what, cuz I think this is gonna work out. So, you know, I put her on the schedule. She was just a natural. The kids say, you know, game to a certain extent recognized game. You can tell somebody who believes in themselves and who's just not scared. Melissa never had a fear of things, and it was even beyond that in high school. Um, her willingness to engage people and her self-confidence, and it just grew. 
I grew up like seeing a black mayor and a black police chief. So I was always safe in my skin, which I think led to me having this like, this super confidence. I've never thought that my skin or me being a black woman was a disadvantage. So I've never like approached business like that. I've never approached life like that. And throughout all of my careers, like even working on Wall Street, when people will absolutely try to use or weaponize your skin color or we weaponize your womanhood, I never believed it because I was able to see the broad spectrum of what it meant to be a woman, what it meant to be a black woman. I was able to allow myself to just be myself. When I think about like my journey, there are a couple of things that have impacted me greatly, like working for my cousin, um, living in China, going to FAMU, living in New York. I went to FAMU literally because it was hot. Like I was like, I deserve better weather. I went to Alabama State my freshman year, I hated it change my mind, transfer. I've never been afraid to change my mind and pivot. I'm like, is this better? If this is better, I'm gonna go after what is better because that's what I want. Like, I'm not, I'm not a person who settles. Like, this is actually something that my team hates because I'm quick to change my mind and I literally don't care. People were be like, oh, well we did all this work. I don't care, this is better. I love FAMU for like what it taught me about business and how it taught me how to like, you know, carry myself. And it taught me how to carry myself with like this, this pride and this understanding that like, there's no difference between me and this white man or there's no difference between me and this like white woman. It's like, nah, I'm, I'm coming for it. When I went to school, I was like, I'm gonna study business finance because my goal is to make money. Like, that, that's why I'm here. I'm in Florida, I'm taking these classes, I'm getting all this student loan debt to make money. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go where the money is. I'm going to like move to New York and I'm gonna work on Wall Street. Fresh out of college, I worked on Wall Street and I hated it. I hated it, but I think more than anything, my colleagues hated it, like my managers hated it. Like, it's, it's one thing, because I think lots of people work incredibly hard, but it's a completely different experience when everyone hates what they do. Like I remember on my first day, I'm like bright eye and bushy tail, and my manager says to me, kid, don't be too excited, they give shit bonuses. This is my first day of work. And I'm like, what, wait, what? Where did I just, what did I just sign myself up for? By year two, I was like, nah, this can't, this can't be my life. So I literally just started thinking about what I actually wanted to do with my life and what I was passionate about. And I always found myself having conversations about beauty or having conversations where I was like so passionate and frustrated with not only the beauty industry, but the media and the movies. Everyone was going after like this one standard of beauty. Everyone was thinking that beauty looked like one thing. It boiled me inside. It hurt me to my core to like know that I have nieces who are um, deeper toned or have dark skin who will grow up and question themselves and question if they're pretty or question if the boys will like them just because they're dark skinned. And so when I really sat down and thought about the things that I talked about really often and the things that got me riled up, it was oftentimes beauty, but not for the sake of like makeup. It was beauty for the sake of self-esteem because I know that if you don't feel good about yourself, you can't do good. If you don't look in the mirror and know that you are enough, then you will never believe that you are enough and you're always gonna accept shit. And I'm like, this isn't right. I was like, I'm gonna do something to change it. And hence, I started making lipstick in my kitchen, which was pretty wild. When I started Lip Bar, it was a side hustle that I went super hard for. I started investing in molds. I had literally every single penny. I invested $30,000 and this was like me saving all of my money and I invested in the Lip Bar over the course of probably a year and a half. Early New York days, lots of boxes in the living room. Uh, literally squeezing by pounds of shea butter and pigment to get to the bedroom. It really looked like a fairy dust factory. <laughs> um, 
So of course we all know she made the lipstick in our kitchen at the crib, but that's what our house looked like. It looked like a lipstick factory and everything else that we had going on was secondary. I guess I had a lot of thoughts looking at everything developed. Number one, is this even gonna work? Number two, does Melissa actually know how to make lipstick? Number three, is anybody gonna sue us because one day this lipstick just happens to not work anymore?